Um, that's Glasgow congregation, yes? yes. Oh, hello. Yes. Um, Daniel's my name. Daniel. Hello, I'm Robert. Pleased to meet you. Um, Thank you. I've been looking at your book, Enjoy Life Forever. I haven't uh -huh. read it all the way through. I've been skim reading bits and pieces, but I think that chapter Thanks. 54, the role of the faithful and discreet slave, is rather important. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Right, yeah. Um, oh. Sure. Um, do you... I mean, do I know you? Are you, are you um, I'm just wondering if you come on the Kingdom Hall and have, and have, have spoken before. Or? No, 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 I haven't. Have you have been on the website? No, I'm, no, I'm, 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 uh, I'm south of Glasgow. I'm quite some oh, way okay. to the south. Right, right, I see. Uh, no worries. Okay. Yeah, sorry, Kenny, what was your, what's your question about that? Um, well, it says... I'm on page 225, lesson 54, paragraph 1, who is the faithful and discreet slave? And it says, Jehovah has always used a man or a small group of men to give direction to his people. After Jesus' death, the apostles and elders in Jerusalem took the lead. Following that pattern today, a small group of elders, dash, the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses, dash, provides spiritual food and directs the preaching work. This group is the faithful and discreet slave whom Jesus appointed. Um, my question is this. Mm -hmm. If Jehovah has always used a man or a small group of men to give direction to his people, and this is the governing body that you claim, yes? Uh -huh. What was the name of that governing body before, after Jesus's, after the first century when all the apostles died out? And before the founding of the Watchtower Society, the first Watchtower was 1879. So, who, who who is this group of men giving direction in, say, the year 1800 or the year 1500 AD or the year 800 AD? Yeah, during that time there wasn't one. Pardon? No, during that time. Sorry, could you can you slow that? Could you just? I'm trying to listen to you. Could you just say that more more slowly? Thank you. It's my class accent. Oh. All right. Um, yes. Um, no. During that, during that time, there was no channel being used. Right. But your book says, under section one, who is the faithful and discreet slave? Jehovah has always used a man or a small group of men to give direction to his people. So, if Jehovah has always used a man or a small group of men to so, give direction to his people, then he must have had a channel in the oh, year eight hundred A.D. Fifteen hundred AD uh -huh. and eighteen hundred AD, and I just wondered who, 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 who were they? No, it's always in the sense of whenever he has um, communicated with with humans, he has, he has used a, an earthly channel of men or a group of men. So, did God communicate with humans in the year eight hundred AD, fifteen hundred AD, and eighteen hundred AD? It says us um, is what the Bible, right? It was, it was there for all of us, but he wasn't. He didn't have a channel during that time. So, if he didn't have a channel during that time, then why do we need a channel today? Because we have the Bible today. Surely, the Bible trumps what you know self-appointed men say of themselves. Because you see, there are so many groups. I've spoken to Christadelphians. I've spoken to Seventh Day Adventists. Yeah. I used to be an extreme Pentecostal called the oneness right. or the apostolic movement um, right. there's a whole host of different groups the way international various uh, sabbath creek keeping groups and sacred name groups and all of these groups claim that they have a channel at the head of their group a channel of communication that gives jehovah's truth to us today so and um, this is where you know the scripture the mentions the faithful and discreet slave um in matthew 24 if you check the, the context it's just a parable but what i'm saying is everyone's claiming this everyone's claiming that oh. their leaders are the faithful and discreet slave or some similar title um yeah. it, it it all starts with roman catholicism saying that you know you have this guy called the pope and he's the successor of peter and if you want to know jesus if you want to get to jesus you do it through the pope and his priests because there's no way to Jesus outside of that channel of communication. Now, so, 
after the Pope, when the Protestant groups came along, then there were splinter groups who came away yeah. from various Protestant groups. And um, some of them would be regarded as cults, like the Mormons and um, the Way International. And there's a host of different groups who've split yeah. away, but they say that they have leaders who are the faithful yeah. and discreet slave today. Even if they don't use that exact term, they might say yeah. apostle or prophet. But they mean the same yeah. thing. Their leader, the leader of their group, the leader of the Seventh-day Adventist, the leader of the Mormon Church, the leader of the Way International, my own background in the oneness movement, an extreme form of Pentecostalism, all of these groups have got leaders who are in direct communication with God. And if you want to get to God, yes, Jesus is the only way to the Father, John 14, 6. But the only way to Jesus is through the leaders of these churches, according to the leaders of these churches. So to the Mormons, the only way to Jesus is through the leaders of the Mormon church. They're the faithful and discreet slave. They're the way to Jesus. They are the sole channel of communication on earth today, the Mormon church. To the way international, it's the way international that's the sole channel of communication. Do you get it? Yeah. To the oneness Pentecostals, they are the ones who are the sole channel of communication. So to be very, very clear, um, the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses do not receive um, divine um, revelations today. That's absolutely not what happens. What, what they do do is they look and study the scriptures and provide spiritual food and disseminate that throughout the world. What is spiritual food? Um, teachings from the scriptures. But there's why nothing, do I? There's what? Nothing, you know, there's nothing. There's nothing supernatural in what in what they receive. You know, they're not getting visions from God. There's nothing. Um, as, as I mean, information is all there in the scriptures. But you see, in Matthew twenty-four, but, but it's all that whole chapter yeah. is about signs which Jesus gave for the last days. And into chapter 25, as Phil is talking about that. So what he's indicating is part of that whole same discussion. And we get down to verse 45. Is that I, 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 I have read it. I, I do know it pretty yeah. well. I have read your, read your book. Um, it's a yeah. contrast between a faithful servant in verse 45 and an unfaithful servant, a wicked servant, in verse 48. And it's simply a commentary on the previous 30-odd verses or 40-odd 40, 40 verses, where Jesus is explaining to his disciples, they, they left the temple, and his disciples asked him, when will these things be? When will be the yeah. destruction of the temple and the sign of the destruction of the temple, the end of the age and the sign of the end of the age? Very strangely, Matthew groups things in threes. So even though he's asked four questions, Matthew only records one of those questions. You have to go to the... Um, you have to go to Mark thirteen four to find the fourth question. And, and Jesus then spends 30 verses, 40 verses, explaining the destruction of the temple and the end of the age, which the disciples thought would happen simultaneously, but they don't. The, the temple was destroyed in AD 70. Uh, Jesus' return, I mean, I don't know when it's going to be. I'm certainly not a prophet, but it's probably going to be roughly 2,000 years. Um, you know, roughly 2,000 years, yeah. give or take a few yeah. decades, um, after when he was talking. And Matthew 24, 45 to 51 is just a parable to say, look, we need to be attentive. We need to oh, wait for Christ's, we need to wait for Christ's coming and be like a faithful servant who's preparing for his master's return, not be like the wicked servant in verse 48 who isn't preparing. It's, 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 it's not a divine command that there's going to be a, a group of men on earth like the Pope who are going to be some infallible leader that we have to follow. No, and, no, and the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses are not an infallible group that we have to, have to follow. Well, then why do I need them? But if they're not infallible, why do I need them? I've got the infallible word of God. If they're not yeah. infallible, then why do I need them? Why do I need a governing body? Any any more than I need the prophet of the Mormon church in Utah, or the head, or the head of the Seventh-day Adventist church, or the Pope, or the leader of the Way International. Why do I need any of these people? Why can't I just pick up the Bible and read it for myself? Because we need to disseminate the word of God throughout the world. 
And that is what the governing body are organising. They organise um, the fact that you can have Bible literature in more languages, a thousand different languages, you can get Bible literature from Job's Witnesses. That's what, that's what they're organising. Okay. Could I suggest so, that I... So what they're doing, where it says there, um, the good news of the pavement received slaves and was master appointed over his domestics to give them the food at the proper time. That is what they're doing. They're dis disseminating spiritual teachings, spiritual food, Bible teachings. But so is everyone else. According to the Seventh-day Adventists, they're the ones teaching the only true Bible teachings. They're the ones only giving the correct food. Everyone else is giving bad food. But the Seventh-day Adventists, according to the Seventh-day Adventists, the only ones giving the good food. Except if you speak to the Mormons, the Mormons will say, no, no, no. Only we give the true food. Everyone else is giving false food. We are the faithful servant. The Mormon church is the faithful servant that's, that's disseminating true food. And then you find out there's over 120 different Mormon sects and they're all saying the same thing. All the other Mormon sects are false. We're the only ones teaching the truth. Then you go to the Pentecostal groups. I used to be oneness an extreme form of Pentecostalism. They're the only ones disseminating the truth. They're the only ones who are the faithful slave on earth today. The Pentecostal church leaders flying around the world in private jets. Everyone else is teaching what error. I what I found interesting about the way Jesus said it is that he, he said that in the form of a question. Who do you guess? Which means that it falls upon us to look at the time of the end. It has to be a group we are trying to spread the word of God throughout the world. Um, and it falls upon each of us to look at the different groups that are claiming that and to discern the answer to Jesus' question. Okay. Who of all these groups is the faithful Greek slave? <laughs> Who is doing the work which that faithful Greek slave should do? Well, according to the yeah. Mormons, it's, it's obviously them. According to the Seventh-day Adventists, it's obviously them. According to the Oneness Pentecostals, it's them. According to the Way International, it's them. All of these groups say that they're the only ones teaching the truth throughout the world. So the thing for me to do, and the thing for you to do, yep. um, and everybody else, is to look at that question and look at these people who are claiming that, and to Jesus, Jesus a question, it's up to us to discern for ourselves which group is doing that. Who is doing that work? OK, well, look, if I read this chapter again, can we speak again? I will read chapter 54 again. Uh -huh. um, I won't have the time to look at the videos with you because that will take up quite a lot of time. But I will try and watch some of the videos before we speak. So if you give me a few days to read this and to prepare and to look up all the scriptures, could we talk about this, but also talk about 1919? Because I've... I've discovered that 1919 is very important. It's when you believe that Jesus did a cleansing and inspection work and he chose the Watchtower Society. Could we look at that, please? I don't know what we're going to get anywhere with this conversation, to be honest with you. Sorry? I don't know that we're going to get anywhere with this conversation, to be honest with you. What do you mean we're not going to go anywhere? I've, I've said I want to read chapter 54 of your book. Go through the scriptures, look at the videos, and also look at the 1919 date. And, and then you say, we're not going anywhere. What's your, what's your problem uh, with me researching this, looking at no, this? No, I don't have any problem with you doing that. Right. Um, OK, well, I will do that. Are you willing to speak to me again? Yeah, yeah. I'm OK. Yeah. All right. Um, um, OK, well, okay. we'll speak again. I think I need some time to look at this because there's quite a lot in this chapter and a lot of scriptures. So I'm going to have to yeah. spend a few days looking at this. When would you like to speak again? Um, next weekend, same time. Next weekend. You need to give me an exact time. You can. You don't need to give it to me now. You can text me, but I'm, I'm going to need an exact time in advance. You can always text me. Um, yeah, we've got to call someone next week. A bigger pardon? The same thing as we've spoken today. All right, next Saturday, should we say 10 o'clock next Saturday? Um, can we make it about 11? 11. 11 a.m. I, I will read chapter 54 by then and look at the scriptures. Okay, thank you very much. I forgot your name. It's. Daniel. Pardon? Daniel. 
Daniel. I'm I'm Robert. Okay, that's lovely, Daniel. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye.